fluffy, flaky, luxurious, rich, muy rico, delicious clouds of ambrosia. Today, we're working on cheddar scallion biscuits. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> you, got right. pretty, you got excited about those biscuits. I said ambrosia. I don't even know. You know, so was that nectar <laughs> of the gods or something? It doesn't even make sense. Like These we're making biscuits, biscuits not liquid. Yeah, biscuits of the gods. Yeah. You know, and I, I want to flip the script a little bit. You know, biscuits are one of those things, yeah, you can do them inside, no worries. Or the person that's kind of afraid of baking, I, I feel like whenever we bake, we tend to overcomplicate it and then we get in our heads and we don't do it as much as we should. Biscuits can happen every morning or they can happen every evening for dinner. They're not just for breakfast anymore, okay? And when you do, when you bake on a Kamada Joe, you pick up a subtle hint of natural lump charcoal flavor. So I want everybody to kind of flip the script on how you think about every single week what you're cooking on the grill. It's not just for smoked meats. Of course it does a great job better than any instrument on earth, but when we start bringing what we do inside to the outside, we start to rediscover it. Biscuits are a beautiful thing. Let's get into it. First thing we need to do is make our fire. We're looking to attain a temperature of 425 degrees indirect. Let's get into the basics. An elevated uh, and essential way to start this cook is to start the fire. I see so many people lighting the fire from the top and trying to let it burn down. It doesn't make any sense. If you were gonna start a bonfire, just like you're gonna start a fire in your Kamada Joe, you're gonna take your, your lighter or your match, I like matches, and we're gonna start our fire starter and we're gonna light the charcoal pile from the bottom because heat rises. We all know that. So let's start rethinking and elevate our game a little bit. Light your fire from the bottom. Remember, for this specific cook, we're looking for 425 indirect. Uh, I don't want to sit here for a country hour. We got biscuits to make. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and kind of turbo start this grill using two fire starters, building from the bottom, little cave around. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not piling this charcoal so tight around the fire starters that it's stifling uh, the oxygen, but I want to let this burn and let it catch and engage as much of the charcoal in the firebox as possible. Notice how it's only it's only been 45 seconds and some of the charcoal that we've placed around the fire starters is already starting to ash and ember up. Now that our fire's started and we're going to let that come to temperature, uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at our ingredients for our delicious ambrosia biscuits. I'm sorry, biscuits, just Maybe biscuits. Biscuits of the gods. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, uh, dry ingredients. You know, and we're just gonna go over this stuff, but it is a good idea to light the fire before you start doing this. If we had the biscuits made and then we lit the fire, that'd be a bit backwards, right? A little dyslexic cooking from uh, Dr. Dyslexic here, but we've done it right. We've got our grill heating up. Now let's get into our ingredients. Uh, and our tools. So we've got a sifter here. We're gonna sift our dry ingredients. A little bit of flour, a little bit of baking powder. And we want the powder, not the soda. P is for pow, S is for spread. That baking powder is gonna help us rise. Then we've got half a teaspoon of salt. Right into the rest of the dry ingredients. I'm going to use my whisk and start mixing this up and sifting all of our dry ingredients together. And whatever salt I've got left over goes right back in. Uh, let's go ahead and take that wonderful egg that the ladies provided for us. And to that, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. I'm gonna throw some gloves on because now it's time to cut our lard and our butter into the dry mix. And I learned a long time ago a little trick for getting butter cut in and it's using a box grater. So we wanna use cold ingredients here uh, and I'm just gonna take one tablespoon of butter and softly grate it on the box cutter right in. And then I'm gonna take the rest of this butter and just put it here so that we can grease this nice cast iron. The lard, if it were really cold, we could push it through our, our grater as well. But it's gotten to a bit of room temperature, so we're just gonna, with our hands, gently tear 
You can see a couple pieces of the cheese kind of adhered to it. That's okay because cheese is our next ingredient after we cut the lard and the butter into our dry mix. Now, a lot of folks have a pastry cutter. Um, I, just, I just don't have one, uh, and that's okay. You can use a fork or two knives, and we're just gonna kind of cross cut, and you're gonna see this mixture come together. Roll around the edges and just have fun with it. And if you've got kiddos around, this is a great job for them. And again, it takes a little bit longer with the, with the cutting and the knife technique than it would a using a pastry cutter, but use what you got. All right, I feel really good about that. Start to see some little flakes. Uh, let's go ahead and add our cheese and our scallions. We're looking for half a cup of cheddar. So the cheddar is obviously nice, cheddar biscuits, but the scallions just bring that little bit of bite that I really enjoy in a biscuit. And plus the color doesn't hurt as well. It's really nice. All right, now we mix the wet and dry ingredients together, forming a dough that we're gonna turn out onto a slightly floured cutting board. Sometimes I like to ditch the spoon and just go ahead and get in there with my hands. And this is looking really nice. You don't want to overwork your dough and you want to get it done in a time where all the ingredients are still relatively cool. Dough's starting to take shape, but before we do anything else, we need to get our deflector shields uh, in the Kamada Joe and close our dome so that dome can start accepting some of the temperature so we get a nice even cook. Let's go ahead and put that all together. Now we're going to use our ash tool. Notice how in a very short amount of time, we've got a very big heat signature. Everybody's ashed up and engaged except for this outer layer here. So I'm going to use my ash tool. And spread everybody out. And again, that's a small amount of charcoal uh, lit very quickly to a really high heat signature. So if we were just gonna grill direct, we're ready to rock and roll at 500 degrees. Once I set the deflector shields in, uh, that's gonna cool that temperature down just a little bit. We're gonna close the dome and let that dome accept some of that energy so it can transfer into the biscuits for a beautiful, even rise. You don't need a whole ton of flour on the cutting board, but you just wanna make sure we're not gonna stick to the board as we turn our dough out. We're not adding flour to the recipe here. And this dough looks fantastic. And so we're gonna round the dough right now. And just by doing this cutting underneath action, and I'm kind of pulling the top. You can even get on there and make a big dough ball if you like. Look how pretty that is. Okay, and with a gentle hand, I'm gonna flatten. And we're only gonna do this a couple times, but I'm gonna pull and flatten. See where it's sticking a little bit over here? So I'll sneak some of my flour that's on the board right there. It's almost like laminating dough. We're gonna give it one more fold and that's it. And I can get this in a circle because we're using a circle cutter. I want about a quarter of an inch to half an inch thickness in this gorgeous dough. Look good dough, look good dough. And if you're worried about stuck a little bit, you can take your knife and kind of just shimmy back and forth. If it starts to feel a little sticky, just a little more flour on top and below, and we are ready to go. I like to karate chop the edges. Is that the technical term? That is totally the technical term. Again, we're elevating our grill game with Chef Eric. We're talking about karate chops to the bottom of the dough. <laughs> All day long. Um, let's talk about some of the physics behind what's about to happen. I'm not gonna get science nerdy on you, even though I'd really like to. Uh, just, just the facts. If I push down and pull up, I'm gonna get a higher rise than if I pushed and twisted and came up. So it's just a push down and a pull up. It's not a push twist. 
Uh, I've used wine glasses in the past when I didn't have these cutters. The only problem with that is the air has nowhere to go, so it blows out the edges a little bit. Um, so again, we're gonna, we're gonna cut as many of these as we can. Then we're gonna refold the dough, press it out, and then cut all the excess pieces. We're gonna put these in our cast iron pan and then throw them in our 425 degree Fahrenheit Kamada Joe. Hashtag winning. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And this last little bit and pieces, that one's for me. No waste. No way. Oh, never any waste. Everybody's snug, hanging out together. Uh, let's check our grill temperature. Should be about 425. We're at 400. So I'm gonna open this draft door a little bit because this is about a 12 to 15 minute cook. I'm gonna open the control tower. And we're on. Whoop. And we're on. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing I'll mention, let me come around here so you can see. Don't be silly and wear black jeans <laughs> that's when you baking. You know me. what I mean? Don't like it. That's, a, that's like, why do the chefs always have to wear the white coats? Because they're going to get jus and such. A, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But we're in this together. Let's get them. All right. I can start to smell oh, these beautiful biscuits. Oh, my gosh. oh hello, beautiful. Yeah, it's stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. And I even found a little bit of ham, so I'm gonna throw that ham, just wake it up a little bit. You know it. Just in time for breakfast. So I'm super excited. Uh, you know, the way I grew up, these would be on the table and you'd have a little uh, dish of black pepper honey and just dip it in and go. And throughout the day, you just finish them off. You know, it's a beautiful lifestyle. Uh, let's pick our favorite biscuit. Let's, uh, let's cut this one in half. While oh, they're still nice and warm. Dude. Get all the pockets and the layers and the flaky. I'm gonna grab some of this ham right off the grill. You always want your stuffing a little bit larger than the biscuit too. That's a proper... You can imagine maybe a little mustard on there or something, but yeah, this recipe provides such a lush rich, delicate um, flavor. Are you in a trance? Yeah, I'm You're in, in a, a biscuit, biscuit trance? trance. I'm like, <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like I'm, I'm trying to talk about what's going on right now and be in the moment, but I'm transported back to being on the Appalachian Trail making these biscuits, you know, and it's, it's snowing outside right now in my mind. I'm out in Grayson Highlands right now, wild ponies running around. Uh, food has a way of transporting you. And I'm sorry, I just got lost uh, in a moment, not the moment. Uh, but let's give it a bite and enjoy this moment together. I'm gonna choose that succulent piece right there. Good biscuit coverage on the top and bottom, even thickness. I see a lot of cheese, a lot of scallion. That's it, scallion. The biscuit really sings my song. So team, that's biscuits made easy. Uh, a lot of fun. Again, start rethinking the recipes you're gonna do outside. Bring at least one baking recipe to the grill each week. Uh, you'll thank me for it. You'll thank yourself for it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed eating these biscuits, don't forget to like, subscribe, and please do leave a comment. Uh, from my good friend Nathan's backyard to yours, happy grilling.